Crossfire. Um, we are starting Crossfire a little bit different today. We are going to be playing Cards Against Crossfire. Uh, so you probably know how that game works, uh, but we're playing it Crossfire version. And I have a bunch of friends with me. Um, so do you want to introduce yourselves and tell me what you've been doing during your isolation? Uh, my name's Sam. I've been eating a lot of cake. What type? Chocolate mud cake. You know like the Coles? The Coles oh, chocolate so mud cake. So good. Oh. Coles or Woolworths chocolate cake. Type, type it in the live oh, chat. What? Oh, no. Anyway, who are you guys? I, my name is Sam, or Hutch as well. Um, I have been cooking and baking a lot of cakes. Making banana bread, you know, the oh, classic isolation God. food. But That's fun. amazing. Hey, anyway, everyone's so much more productive than I am. I've just been binging really trashy Netflix shows. Such as? There's this new one. Never have that I ever. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> I've been there. I've done it. I just did If you haven't watched it, don't. But also, like, do. Speaking of that, let's um, <laughs> okay. get into cards and get into crossfire. Um, so, I'll be the host first. So, Emily, which one do I pick up? The middle one? The middle. Okay. So, I'm going to pick up this one and I'll read it out. And then no, Sam, Sam and Emma can look at their cards and then they're going to have to give to me okay. the card that they think is the funniest. And then I judge. So, dude, do not go into the CEC. Something is something. So you need to give me two cards. Also, they have two cards in their decks, so do I, that they can write their own little answer on. So there's also that little thing. So dude, do not go into the CEC. Something is something. I'm trying to find, yeah, a couple. Hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> you have five seconds. Yikes. Five, um, four, wait, wait, I don't know where I put ah, three. Wait, I lost the card. Where did it go? All right, so. Dude, do not go into the CEC. 68 litres is taking a game way too seriously. 68 litres yeah. are taking away like a that. game way too seriously. Okay. Dude, do not go into the CEC. The... Oh. <laughs> is holding your crush's hand in Drop the Train. <laughs> that's, that's big. Dude, do not go into the CEC. Fletch is social distancing. <laughs> we I love to give that one to Fletch. We, we love, love you, Fletch. Fletch. We, we love you, Fletch. We love you, Fletch. Yeah. This is fine. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, hold on. I'm going to set a one minute timer, everyone. Okay. What is Pat Jones thinking about right now? Oh. Is this just a singular? Yep. What is Pat Jones thinking <gasps> about right now? Sam obviously backs himself in. <laughs> it's actually it's, it's, gonna be a really good one. <laughs> okay. What is Pat Jones? I don't know who's who's because I've like mixed it around as well. Who? What is Pat Jones thinking about right now? Eating healthy at Impact. <laughs> So you know, is that even possible? Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> it's, I think it's very possible. What is Pat Jones thinking about right now? Stealing 10 a.m. morning tea from the kitchen. Fair. <laughs> very fair. Or. The scent of boys' cabins on impact. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you can get rid of that smell. No, it is haunting. nasty. Um, yeah, <laughs> the scent of yes. Okay. Well I'll done, Emma. Yeah. And then give right. me those. Am I hosting? Yeah. So hold on, we need to pick up one. Impact got completely ruined because blank. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Impact got completely ruined because Pat Jones. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just straight up harsh. <laughs> Impact was totally ruined because Pat Jones yelling in every sentence. <laughs> 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 what is with these attacks on Pat Jones? <gasps> oh, no. Impact was totally ruined because there were no chicken chippies at Impact. 10 out of 10, we can, we're not dissing Pat here, and that was the most accurate. Thank you. Chicken chippy. Oh. I love you, Pat. Okay, what's that smell? <laughs> okay, okay. So, what's that smell? 68 kids with high pitched voices. Oh, okay. Great smell. <laughs> okay. Great all right, smell. All right, all right. What's that smell? The Arrows boy's not listening. Guilty! 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 <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. And what's that smell, guys' night? I backed myself. I personally don't know that smell. That's what I, I was like, I have to have explain that. What, can you explain that smell? It's the smell Test of trial. <laughs> trial. Victory. Yeah. Victory. Eating <laughs> hot 
like, it's just, it's hard to put into words. So what's the Aras boy's not listening. Oh. Oh. I don't know that why, because it's not really a smell, but it's just a general vibe. Guilty! <laughs> Me. Is this the last one that you've got? It's the last one. No. Okay. Why can't I sleep at night? Oh, we have to pick up. I keep forgetting. <laughs> Is this the last round? Last. Yeah. Why can't I sleep at night? Take love. Interesting. <laughs> I backed myself. <laughs> it's one of those ones where you're like, you're like, oh, hopefully we be rogue enough that it'll be funny. <laughs> it didn't pay off. Why can't I sleep at night? Got gastro. <laughs> That's good. Gender segregation. Guilty! <laughs> From past impact experience, I've got to go with got gastro. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, another tally well, on Emma's board. Oh. Awesome. Well, that's all for Cards Against Crossfire. Thanks so for joining me. Oh, yeah. So, so. Is that it? Yeah. Um, we're going to get into a time of worship now, so if you guys would like to join us, um, however that looks for you. I lived hot on the wire and hand in the fire for so long, but you showed me better, a new kind of love. It's ever the one that I want I'm lifting you higher, higher There's nothing that I'd rather do The sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I never knew a love like this before The kind of life that I could not find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure that I want your heart and God I just want to be where you are where you are God I just want to be where you are where you are God I just want to be where your love like nothing I've seen my wildest of dreams don't come close and I've never known better than living like this I cannot resist you Lord I'm lifting you higher, higher There's nothing that I'd rather do The sweet elevation of praises There's no one I love more than you I never knew a love like this before The kind of life that I cannot find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure That I want your heart God, I just want to be where you are Where you are God, I just want to be where you are Where you are God, I just want to be, and after all this time, with you by my side, I can't imagine what it'd be like on my own, and i made up my heart, this love is all I've got, you're the only one I know worth living for, the sweet elevation of praises, there's no one I love more than you. I never knew a love like this before The kind of life that I cannot find on my own I've seen the world but I have never been so sure That I want your heart, God God, I just want to be where you are And where you are God, I just want to be where you are Where you are God, I just want to be where you are.
up in your presence I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave Oh, I'm not here for blessings Jesus, you don't know I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. I'm sorry. you guys um, but Crossfire has become one of my favorite times of the week and even in this isolation time it has been an awesome time to be able to engage with you guys and to also see the live chat and to just see you guys throughout the week engaging with content um, and so thank you so much for joining in and for joining us in Crossfire still uh, we still want this community to be growing and for you to be enjoying this community so thank you for joining us um, if you are joining us tonight uh, leave a comment in the live chat telling us what has encouraged
encouraged you this week. Um, and just a reminder, we are able to engage with Crossfire every single day of the week at the moment, which is awesome. So Monday, we have a live devotion and then you can also engage with us on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, we have worship, Thursday, thrills, Friday, you know what that is, it's Crossfire Live. And then we also have Saturday mornings at the moment, a mini sermon that you can listen to if you'd like. And then we always have Sunday, 10 a.m. church live. Uh, so we'd love to see you at any number of those. But for now, we're going to have the Bible reading and prayer. So next passage comes from Psalms chapters 1, verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose ever leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Please pray with me. Dear God, I pray for Ben and Nick, and that you will speak through them tonight. I pray that we will all be able to join together at Crossfire soon, and I pray that we will all stay safe and healthy through these tough times. Amen. Hey Crossfire, my name is Ben and this is my good friend Nick and we're both leaders on the Year 9 Mavericks at Crossfire. As we start tonight, we want you to think about a time where you heard a life-changing story. The kind of story that you hear and it impacts everything about you and nothing is the same again. I remember when I was in high school and I watched a movie called The Truman Show now, to give you the basic premise of the story in this movie, there's a guy called Truman who's living in a fake world with a whole heap of paid actors around him pretending to be his friends. And Truman has no idea what's going on, but there are hidden cameras everywhere around him. And the whole idea is that they're filming him to make a reality TV show for people in the real world to watch and enjoy. And now Truman was so rattled, he had no idea what was going on, but they were making all of this without him knowing a thing about it. And I remember after I watched this movie, I felt so suspicious. And I looked around, all around me for cameras to see if I could find anyone filming me. And I didn't find any, but it was still a story that impacted me greatly. And Nick, I wonder if you've ever had a story like this as well. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Ben. Um, guys, it is so great to be with you here uh, for another night of Crossfire Online. Um, I'm so excited for what God has to share with us tonight. And actually, Ben, I have had a story um, that has actually totally impacted my life. Um, it happened about a year ago. Um, I was on uh, a short-term mission in Fiji with, with our church, St. Paul's. And I remember it was one of our more uh, quiet days. We were just kind of hanging out um, in the village. And I remember at breakfast, our team leader came up to us and was just like, hey, um, just so that you guys are aware, we're going to um, be hearing a testimony from one of the people uh, from the village this morning. I was like, yep, yeah, awesome. Um, I've heard testimonies before. I kind of know what to expect. It's going to be a great experience, a great time. I'm ready. Turns out, Ben, I was not ready uh, for what <laughs> came next. We heard an amazing testimony from a guy who had spent 20 years, 7 months, and 13 days in prison. Wow. Um, and he had only been out of prison for two months after... Um, before he came and spoke to us. And the reason why he was in prison was he was a convicted murderer. And sharing a room and being in the same room with someone who you know has killed someone else is really terrifying mm. and can really change your life. But we heard about how this man found God in prison, how, um, you know, the, he would talk about how the prison day would start at 6 a.m. And so his day started at 3 a.m. so that he could be spending time in the, in the Word, praying to God, getting to know His Father more and being in a relationship with Him. And that, that really shaped my faith. It, it shook my faith and like, it changed the way I looked at my faith. Mm. Yeah, wow, well, that's huge. Thank you so much for sharing that. Mm. And I wonder if you've ever had a story like this, a life-changing story that impacted every part of your life. Well, tonight we're going to look at a story that isn't just life-changing. Mm but it's eternity changing too. This story won't just impact your life here and now, tonight. 
but it will impact you for all of eternity as well. And the story that we're going to look at tonight is found in the Bible, which is also called the Word of God. And as we look at God's Word tonight, we want to see exactly why God's Word is so important to you, Mm. why it changes absolutely everything for you, and how you can live in light of God's Word. So let's start with our first point for tonight, why God's Word is so important for you. So Nick, why do you think God's Word is so important for us today? Mm. Um, Crossfire, I think it's, it's simple. God's Word is so important for us today because God's Word teaches us how to live our lives as a Christian. It, it shows us the way um, to live out our faith and so that other people may, may be seeing how God um, should be their ruler. And so I think we see this so clearly uh, in Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Ben, would you mind reading that for us? Yeah, absolutely. So in Psalm 1, we read, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, mm-hmm. and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, mm-hmm. which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Mm. And you know, we see here that verse 3 is so vital for us to understand why the word is so important. Verse 3 talks about this tree that is planted by a stream of water. This tree is not only sustained by this water, but it grows and it thrives because of its position and because of its access to water. I want you to imagine a tree trying to grow in the middle of a desert. I don't know how often you go to deserts, but there aren't many trees in deserts and that is because their roots have nowhere to go they have no solid ground to hold on to and they have no water for them to grow and so these trees they end up withering away and dying and sometimes we see trees as we drive along our roads you know they're on the median strip and yes these trees do grow but they only grow when they are fed from rain and rain in australia isn't always a certainty when we go through periods of drought these trees get no rain and some of them will wither away and die. Some of them will still be alive, but they will not be growing and they will not be thriving. I wonder if you imagine a tree next to a stream of water, if you've ever been to a beach and been walking along a beach and you've seen trees that are so huge and their roots are so massive and so strong and so sturdy, you know that tree will never be shaken. And all you are seeing is the surface level of those roots. Those roots go so much deeper underground. They are so strong because of their position and because of their access to water. And because of the environment they are in, they thrive. Mm, Yeah, and and it's the same with us as well, Crossfire. You see, when we try and do life on our own, we're like that tree that's planted in the desert that eventually withers up and dies because it has no access Mm. to water. Doing life on your own, separate from God, is empty and it will always end up leaving you feeling like something's missing, like something isn't quite right. And that's because something is missing. Mm. And you think about it this way, Crossfire. When you put your worth in something, your entire life hinges on that one thing affirming you. If you put your worth in your popularity, then all it's going to take is for one bad post, one bad post that doesn't get enough likes, one story that doesn't get enough views. That's going to just crush you and shatter you. You're going to lose all your worth. If you find your worth in intelligence, in academia, again, all it's going to take is one bad mark, one bad assessment, and you'll be constantly thinking about how you should have done better and where you went wrong, and it will never be satisfying for you no matter what other marks you get that semester. Or if your worth is in your money and your clothes and what you wear and what you buy and the brands that you own, all it's going to take is for one more bad thing to happen, one of those things to be destroyed, one of those things to be stolen, for you to lose your job. If any of that happens, your, your worth, your sense of worth is gone and you are completely empty. And so living in the world, we can see clearly, is like being this tree planted in the desert. It may be okay for a while. You may somehow find a way to last. But there is no way the things of this world can sustain you because everything you find value in in this world, everything you put worth on in this world will eventually prove to be utterly worthless. Mm. But that's why the Word of God is so amazing. 
Because unlike the things of this world, when we rely on God, He will always provide. God gives us His Word so that we can have joy in relationship with Him. Being in relationship with God and drenching yourself in His Word is like being that tree planted by the stream of water. The stream that sustains you and gives you worth and meaning will never, ever run dry. God is always true and He loves you so deeply and He wants you to seek Him in His Word so that you can experience true worth and meaning unlike anything that the world can offer. You can be like that tree that is planted by the stream of water. You see, we want to dwell in God's Word so that we can grow in relationship with God and be like that tree that is planted by the stream of water. But the psalm doesn't end here. And as we continue reading, we realize that there's actually an issue with this beautiful goal that we've just spoken about. So Nick, can you continue reading Psalm 1 for us, please? Absolutely, Ben. From verse 4, it says, Not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. And here's the issue that every single one of us faces. As we've already explored, every single one of us wants to be in relationship with God so that we can experience love and value as we read God's Word and we invest into His Word, unlike anything that the world can offer us. But as Psalm 1 describes, there's a different reality for those who are wicked. Mm. Now, you guys may be thinking like, yeah, you know, this seems really interesting and all that, but I'm not really sure if this is for me. I'm a pretty good person. I do all the right things at home. I say all the right things. I've never get in trouble at school. I've never broken the law. I think I'm pretty sweet. But Crossfire, the horrible reality is that each and every one of us has to face is the fact that we can never live up to the perfect expectation of what it takes to be a Christian. Mm, yeah, living up to God's perfect standard is like setting up a treadmill at the start of a running race. The gun goes and you start running on your treadmill and you push really, really hard. But then after a while, you realize that you haven't moved at all. And it doesn't matter how fast you go or how hard you try, you're never going to get any closer to the goal. You'll never be able to make it because your best efforts are never going to be good enough. Mm. And it's the same with trying to live a perfect life. In the book of Romans, we read, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You see, every single one of us has stuffed up and rebelled against God. None of us are able to live up to God's perfect standard. This dream of being in God's Word and growing in relationship with God to become like that tree planted by streams of water just feels like it's slipping further and further away. And Crossfire, this leads us to our second point tonight. Why like God's word changes absolutely everything for us. Look with me in John 1, 1 to 4. It says this, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. Now this passage talks about something in the beginning. This talks about the word in the beginning. And Ben, I wonder, when else in the Bible does it talk about something in the beginning? That's a great question. I think the one that immediately pops into my mind, Nick, is in Genesis 1, mm. where it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Absolutely. And what this means is that at the start of time, everything that we see around us today mm. was created by God. Mm. You know, the first <laughs> time I ever read this passage, I was so confused by it because I thought, hang on, I thought God was, the, it was in the beginning. I thought God was in the beginning and then, and then He created everything and everything kind of flowed on from that. And I had no understanding of how there could be this thing that was the Word that was there in the beginning as well. But it was also with God and the Word was also God. Like, I just didn't understand it. And the reason I didn't understand it is because I stopped reading at verse 4. Ten verses later, John gives us the answer in, in, in John 1, 14. And it says this, it says, The Word became flesh 
and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came to the father full of grace and truth. Yeah, that's actually awesome because here John tells us that the word is actually Jesus. Mm. Jesus is the word taking on flesh and living on earth. And this changes everything for us. You see, if we read this same passage, except we replace the word with Jesus, this is what it says. In the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with God, and Jesus was God. Mm. <coughs> Jesus was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus, all things were made. Without Jesus, nothing was made that has been made. In Jesus was life, mm. and that life was the light of all mankind. And you know, Crossfire, we don't often think about this, do we? We don't even think about what this actually means for us. <clears throat> what this means is that Jesus was there from the beginning of time, right? God was always three in one and he will always be mm. three in one. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God is the creator of the universe. He is the creator of you and I. And when God created us, he gave us the choice. He gave us a choice to either live our own way or to live for him. And yet God knew that we were going to reject him. God knew that we were going to turn away from him. And yet he still lovingly created us. You know, when he created the earth, it wasn't like we were in the Garden of Eden and then Adam and Eve all of a sudden sinned and God was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? I have no idea what's going on. There's this mess and now I have to solve it and I don't know how to... No, none of that. Now he knew all along that Jesus was going to have to come down and live the perfect life that we could not live and die for us so that we may have forgiveness with the Father and have a relationship with Him again. See, Jesus was never God's plan B, but He was always plan A. And I think knowing and believing in this story changes absolutely everything for us. Because mm. we now have a God that has had a plan to save us from before the beginning of time. He knew that we were going to stuff up. He knew that you were going to rebel against him and he knew what it would cost to bring you back and to save you and yet he still chose to create you he still chose that that cost was worth it he still chose that that cost was worth it to be in a relationship with you and this is the eternity changing story that impacts absolutely everything for us you see the word has become flesh jesus has become a human and has lived with us. He died for us, bringing about our forgiveness for our sins mm. and allowing us to have a renewed relationship with the Father. Our life, our future now have a new meaning as we can now spend our eternity with God. Our eternity has gone from one that is from death to life because the Word, Jesus, became flesh to pay the price that our sins deserved. Mm -hmm. So, so far we've seen that God's Word is so important to you because investing into God's Word is the only way to live a fulfilling life of meaning and value. Mm -hmm. However, we also saw that each and every one of us has sinned and ruined this relationship with God. And this has separated us from Him and from His Word by our actions. But we've just seen that God wasn't content to leave us there. He wasn't content to leave us in our brokenness. And Jesus, the true Word of God, became flesh so that He could live a life like we live. He could die the death that we deserve and He could rescue us from our sin. And the big question left then is what now? I mean, we've been rescued from our sin and we've been redeemed by Jesus, but what now? We're going to finish our time together by looking at our third point for tonight, which is living in light of the Word. Can you please read from Hebrews 4 for us, Nick? Absolutely, Ben. Starting from verse 14. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. 
let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Yeah, that's great. You see, our response is one of trust and confidence. Mm. Jesus has gone before us as a human. He's faced the struggles we face, but he did not fail like we do. And on top of this, he died in our place to rescue us from our sin and rebellion. Mm. And because of this, as the passage in Hebrews says, you can approach God with confidence. He wants to hear from you. He cares so deeply for you and he wants a relationship with you so badly. And if you accept Jesus' offer of forgiveness, you can read and invest into God's word. You can grow in intimacy with God and you can be like that tree that is planted by streams of water. But if you choose to decline Jesus' offer of forgiveness, then you'll be like the wicked, still stranded as a sinner, like the tree in the desert that has its roots in empty sand, trying to get any last ounce of water that the world can offer, but ultimately heading towards an eternity separated from the true source of mm. water. And so Crossfire, the story that we've looked at tonight, it's not just a message that changes your life right now. It's not just a message that changes how you live out tomorrow or your next week, but no, this changes your entire eternity. And I wonder how will you respond to tonight's message? Will you choose to accept the offer of forgiveness that Jesus is offering for you? Will you choose to follow in his footsteps in the perfect example that he sets for us? Will you continue living your own way, living for the world, finding your worth in these things that can so quickly be taken away from us, these things that will never, ever be able to sustain us and that ultimately we will just wither away because of the emptiness that it brings. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. That even though we are so sinful and do not deserve your love, you still want a relationship with us so badly that you would send your one and only son into the world to die in our place upon that cross. We pray that you would help us to approach you with confidence and that we would soak ourselves in your word seeking to grow in relationship with you and know you more. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
as I am, I come. Hallelujah! Oh, what amazing love! Thank you, Jesus. Just as I am, I come. And I Just as I am, I come and hallelujah. Oh, what amazing love! I will rise, stand redeemed. Heaven open over me to your name eternally. Thank you so much uh, to Nick and Ben for bringing that word. Uh, we are so thankful to God uh, for his gift of the living word to us. And so we want to encourage you this week to take a moment, even each day, or even if you choose a few days of the week to spend some time in the word, getting to know God a little bit deeper. And why don't you message your leader or even just message Crossfire Youth on Instagram and tell them what you've been learning from God's word. Have a great week and we'll see you on Sunday.